So good morning, everybody. And as I said a little earlier, it was such a pleasant surprise to see so many people are interested in this topic. And I'm hoping that we are going to have a fruitful and uh, inspiring engagement today because um, the whole point of this is to hear your views on the Liasa in touch and also about writing for the Liasa in touch so that we can improve what we do on our side while at the same time um, you are, are learning on your side. So it's a learning process, I think, for, for, for and, and uh, um, exploring process for both uh, parties here. So this is not going to be a presentation with slides um, because I don't want anybody be, to be distracted from or to just receive information. I want it to be a sharing um, exercise very much. Um, and I want to hear your views as well because um, I think that we, um, at, after 25 years, uh, have to also look at how we change um, what we do and maybe change the magazine as well um, to suit the current times. So um, welcome everybody. And just before we start to just mention that I am going to ask for a picture, maybe Anna Marie will oblige. So um, if people want to do a little bit of makeup or hairbrushing or whatever, if you're not at work and you're still um, like me sitting at home, then um, sometime during the course of the morning, you can do that. And then um, just before we finish, I'll ask you to put your, um, your cameras on. Um, and also if you're speaking, if you don't mind doing the same, so we can see who it is, unless you of course have real challenges um, with data and anything like that, then of course I do understand that um, you don't want to video stream. So um, I think I'm going to switch my video off to now and then um, we can carry on um, with the slides. Okay, so what we've basically done is have a, a slide just telling us the kinds of topics that we want to touch on. And then um, to look at what your challenges are, why you write, and that I'm not going to be uh, teaching anybody how to write. Um, I do have exchanges with people on an individual basis when we discuss a specific article, if it's necessary. Um, and so if there are things that I may have at some point raised with you and you um, during this um, workshop want to ask me about those things or have a little take, maybe everybody can share um, the things that they uh, see as concerns and then maybe we have answers um, during the workshop. Um, I must say that this I find this very uh, disconcerting because I'm looking at a screen and I feel like I'm talking to myself and I'm such a, a person that likes um, to be interactive and see people's faces and um, how they receive what I'm saying. So um, I do find that this is a little bit uh, from my side, a little bit disconcerting as well, um, but we'll persevere. Oh, Ingrid's asking if there will be a comfort break. Um, I think we will, yes, we, we, I think we will need a comfort break, Ingrid, Get, catch a cup of coffee. Um, thank you for raising that. And I think um, uh, it's, we'll start at 10. What about a break at about 11? Um, and then we can carry on afterwards. If you want to. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, so I just thought as an introduction, I will speak to you about the magazine itself and what I do as the editor. So you understand basically um, the process that I go through. Um, I know that um, in the branches and interest groups, one of the things you have to do as part of your reporting 
on an annual basis as they do produce newsletters. Um, so at the end of this workshop, Kahiso is going to send all of you uh, like a handout um, where there are um, tips on compiling um, a newsletter um, and with the references and links and things that you can you can use as well. So you will have um, some kind of backup afterwards. Um, so in in editing um, the the magazine um, from a production perspective, what my role as the editor is is that I, as you know, send out the call for articles. Um, at that point, I already start thinking about what kind of content I'm looking for in that issue of the magazine. So because the magazine is the official mouthpiece of the association and it speaks to the association's programs, it's a way of marketing the association as well to show what it does. My first um, uh, point of departure would be what are the flagship programs and how to take those forward. So, um, as you all know, we've just now, uh, just now um, in the process of doing the June July issue. There were two things that happened. The first thing is that this issue is the 25th um, anniversary issue. And I know that many people were invited, especially our long-standing members, have been invited to um, write reflective um, uh, articles on their LIASA journey, what LIASA has done for them, and why they remain active members within LIASA. We also invited um, past presidents and various people. So those ideas about whom to invite um, and how to approach a 25th anniversary issue. Those are the ideas that I would uh, jot down uh, since I, <laughs> since last year already, actually, I started on this and start thinking about how we would present the content. So I see that Leanne is saying, does every issue of Lias and Touch have a specific theme? Yes, it looks at the flagship programs for that specific quarter. So for example, the theme for the June issue is traditionally South African Library Week. That would be the main focus um, of the June issue. This year, because of Liasa's um, 25th anniversary, and as you all know, Liasa established on the 10th of July, which covers the next period, we also then focused on the 25th anniversary for this issue. But generally, we would be looking at South African Library Week and then everything related to that. And then as little short um, snippets of, 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 of um, news, um, I invite people to write about practically anything. But in the call for articles, there will always be some suggestions as to um, what we will be covering in that issue and people can then write accordingly. Um, so it starts out with the call for articles and the call for article for the deadline that is in the call for articles takes into account the production process. Now, because the magazine is available in both print and electronically, the, 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 <laughs> um, so, so because of the print version, our uh, production process is based on getting something to print. So that is a six week process. And that is why I am fairly um, sort of um, strict about the deadlines, because otherwise I will, I will run late for going to print. And of course, the postal service is a mess, but we do have um, colleagues in far-flung places who still um, 
the, the colleagues that are in various places um, still have challenges with data and stuff for downloading. So we do bear that in mind as well. Um, and so we work on a print, uh, a, a print production time frame. I start editing the minute people start sending. So I am already working on, I haven't yet proofread the June, July issue, but I am already working on the September issue. I've already got articles for September. I held some things over from June, July for September. And then people that sent to me after the deadline, um, some of those. Um, so for example, if you sent me an article about Freedom Day, which was on the 27th of April, or World Book Day, which was on the 23rd of April, those dates fall after um, the deadline of the 22nd of April, I will hold those over. So as I say, I'm already compiling for September. And um, that you will see a call for articles that will go out probably on the 1st of June, even though the June magazine isn't with you yet, I'm already working on September. Um, and that call for articles will, go, will be um, for the September issue. And that's basically how it works. And yes, in every call for articles, it actually tells you what the focus is for one. And the second thing that it tells you is other topics that we will be looking at. And you don't have to stick with those topics. And I'll come to that later, but that's basically how it works. And that is what I call news gathering. Then um, there's the editing. Um, part of things, which, um, as I say, as the articles arrive, I start proofreading them, I look at them, and very often I engage with people around them because they've gone early, so we have time to talk about what they're writing about, and also um, I look at the photographs that they send, I look at things that they might want to change, I look at, uh, I might send something back and say, you know, uh, this is a really interesting but why don't you tell us about these things? Expand, you have the time to do it. Expand the article um, to cover a bit more. Um, I often do that with people who are writing um, for the first time and maybe they're writing about their libraries or it's a library I've never heard of. And I think that that would be of interest to um, our readers and I would ask them specific information um, about their libraries so we get more of a of a profile than just um, an event. Um, then I do um, the proofreading, um, which is uh, you can do it while you're editing. Um, and then I do it after the, the, the magazine has come um, out in a draft format. Um, so there's two kinds of proofreading. The one is the language in the articles itself and uh, the grammar corrections, all of spelling, all of those things. But then once it's gone into the publishing um, software, you could find that in terms of the layout, words have been chopped off, um, captions get um, scrambled, all of those things. So there's two proofreading processes at the beginning and again before we go to print. Um, and at the moment, I'm sitting with a 48-page magazine, if you guys are interested, <laughs> that I'm going to have to now proofread over the next few days. Um, once I've done all of that and I've gathered all the information um, and I'm, a, I'm happy with the articles, I then organize them into a what I call a logic logical order for the graphic designer. So I create folders and I try and name the folders according to um, a broad topic. So South African Library Week 2022 will have a folder. And then within that folder, there would be subfolders. So if you um, had a program in your library, um, I will name your folder SA Library Week or SALW at uh, Eastwood Library. And within that, I will then put your article that's been already been corrected 
and I will um, add your photographs and the photos will have some captions so that when the graphic designer gets the copy, everything, and this is a very old fashioned way of doing it, but I give to, to prevent any kind of mishaps, I actually download everything Okay, okay, Sunita, see that, thanks. Um, so when I, I uh, hand it over, it's in that same order. It's, you know, um, it's a stick that he can refer to, that he can, um, that doesn't change because he's going to transfer that stick then into his software, but he's always got that backup. So things don't get lost or scrambled or anything like that. Um, and uh, yeah, and at that, that's the stage I hand it over. And then I, as I said, um, once I get the, the, the design and layout uh, back uh, from, the, um, from the graphic designer, at that point, I print out the magazine. I go to a print shop. I get it printed in a booklet form so I can see what it looks like if it's printed. And then I painstakingly go through it all with a red pen uh, mark it all out, uh, see if I'm happy with the design. If I think the order of articles are, I'm happy with it, I will leave it. If not, I will ask for changes so I can, I can change the layout. I can ask for redesigns of the cover. Um, I look at the print quality of the photographs. Um, if I don't like a picture, I could ask him to replace it with something else. So again, it is quite... Um, an intense work process uh, before we actually get to the, the final uh, print version. Um, and at that stage, when it goes to print, um, and the print has been uh, basically delivered for distribution, it's at that stage that we also upload the, the magazine um, to, the, to the website. Anna Marie does that. And you will get an email saying that um, the magazine is available and a link. Of course, we uh, take no responsibility for the South African Post Office's uh, Postal Service. So uh, I think it's more luck than anything else if you actually get your magazine uh, during the month. But the aim is that if we can publish and have the magazine uh, ready for distribution by the first of the month of publication, that is the aim. It will normally go into um, the post the following week, say by the 6th or the 7th of the month. And in Cape Town, I think we're fairly lucky. We normally get our magazines in about 10 days, 10 working days. So generally, I receive my personal copy um, before the end of the month of publication. So at this point, I'd like to see if there are any questions. People can talk. I find it very difficult to always listen to the, to look at the chat. So if there's any questions from anybody. Ingrid has raised her hand. Ingrid. Hi, okay, let me see if I can unraise my hand, a lower hand, okay, um, <laughs> otherwise the hand otherwise the hand stays up the whole time and, and you can keep having to ask me if it's an old hand. Um, so I just want to say that in, in, in this, I um, do the people's column, um, um, which I sometimes have to say to know, oh gosh, they are lean pickings because nobody has sent anything through. I do not go chasing after people. Um, um, and I, I think if those guys that are sitting on this on this on this can 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 also sort of keep an eye out that if your if your institution has made an appointment to kind of go like, hey, have you actually you you know sort of sort of let Liasa know so that I can actually that I can get the I can get the um, um, get the notifications. I'd send out a separate call. 
for the people column so that it doesn't get because because it needs to be short. Um, I'm so glad that there's a question about the photographs. Um, 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 <laughs> I mean, because 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 Nora and I kind of tear our hair out um, with with what with what gets sent. Um, and and um, I also don't do I don't do rewriting. I'm um, I mean you know sort of I will will sometimes sometimes edit and try and try and maybe shorten 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 an entry. But again, that is also with negotiation with with Nora because because maybe it's an obituary of 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 for 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 someone who's been a. Uh, been in the business for in, in library world for, for 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 long and it might need it might need a it might need more than the the the, the short the short contributions what also happens what also happens is people see the people column call come out and then i get i get sent stuff that actually is for Nora, not for not for me. Articles and that, and I, I mean, and I do pass them on. So, so I must say, people don't always read properly. But we know that we're in libraries. We put signs up, and no one ever reads the signs. Um, but we do, we we do it ourselves. So, so I just wanted to just kind of remind people that we we need to, um, you know, that if you have a if you have a have contributions for the people's column, or you know of. Um, contribute you know you know that there have been new appointments or somebody's retiring or has retired um, 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 please um, you know keep keep those keep those coming so, sometimes I, I I I kind of go you know they, they, I kind of wonder if there's actually going to be any contributions at all, at all. Um, so, so I just wanted to say that, that that's a particular challenge that that I have, and I stick to the same deadlines that Nora's that Nora's got. Um, um, and if stuff comes after the deadline, it then goes into my folder for 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 the for the for the next month for the next for the next lit. Okay, so um, I see there are a couple of questions. Um... Uh, Marupeni asked about advertising. Yes, we charge for our advertising, Marupeni, and that is handled by the Liasa office. Um, we contact people every year. Uh, we have our, our regulars, as you guys who see the magazine know. Uh, we have our regulars, and then, um, but with every conference, and uh, of course, we haven't had for two years. Um, but I used to walk, to walk that exhibition wall and I go to every single exhibitor and I speak to them about the LIT and I have a rate card. And then at the end of the year of the conference for the following year, we actually have a, a little campaign uh, between me and Anna Marie and we uh, develop uh, specials, uh, you know, type book for book and pay for four before the end of uh, 31st of December, we normally try and aim at that. And then, um, and we give them a discount. So uh, we do have advertisers and all our loyal advertisers, Sabinet, UKS, um, who else is on here? I think we've got Book Talk now, um, Mindex, um, and I think EBSCO is taking ads this year. It, it's not the same all every year. Uh, Fans Kike, for example, only took one for, you know, it depends on what the financial uh, situation is like at the time. But um, yes, they, they, they do that. And I actually interact with all of them. Um, then um, Anna's asking if I have a team. Um, I'm the team, and <laughs> um, We have a, I do most all the, as Ingrid said, uh, she does the people um, pages, although I might sometimes get something in separately. And I uh, also add that onto what Ingrid has done. Um, and then uh, basically, as I said, I do all the proofreading, I do the compilations, that then goes to um, the graphic designer uh, and print, who does graphic design to print, which is Madni. I think the 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 um, names are all in the in the magazine, and you'll see. I think I don't remember if we've put Ingrid at the back or the people page. We must put that information 
back again because we used to have Ingrid's um, name and, and, and email. Um, the Liasa in touch uh, email address that you get uh, for your submissions, that is a group email, which uh, I am part of, um, Ingrid is part of, um, Anna Marie um, in the office. And we basically uh, take the areas or the articles that is relevant to the work that we do. So Ingrid can in extract, for example, the people information and I'll do the rest. Um, the, so I don't know if that is help anybody, but I see Jane is asking, do if I decide on the layout, no, the layout and the graphic designer does the layout. So from the layout, um right through the creative that creative and production process is uh, a graphic designer Magli Grimwood who's been doing it I think uh since 2003 um and then um we basically have a free free hand um and I will go back and say uh, no I don't like this here but for me it's more uh, the look and feel, I still very, uh, I look at the look and feel and whether I like it. And a lot of it has to do with, we compare all the time also what is happening with magazines, even in the commercial world, like how have they changed their, as the fonts changed, what is the look and feel, how is the, their magazines changed over the years, and we try and look at that um, from a creative perspective. Uh, yeah, so if you for somebody who actually looks at magazines, reads journals and that, you'll see that the, uh, the, the Lias in Touch has a very distinct um, look and feel that has developed over, over the years and that we, we actually do change it um, and freshen it up um, um, as the years go by, as fonts change, as uh, I mean, if you compare the 2003, which is, I think, online now, to... Um, where we are today, um, I think you will see that there's been quite an evolution uh, in the in the magazine itself. Are there any other questions? Anybody else with their hand up? I can't see if there are hands up. Uh, no hands up that I can see. But Nora, I just want to get back to Sunita's question of earlier. Um, so yes, the, the themes are in the for yes. um, articles, but can you perhaps just share with the group the sort of the general theme for each and every edition? You know, what is the margin theme usually? What is the okay? Just that they have a sort of an idea. Okay, so basically, you'll see in the call for articles what I do, and you will get an example. I don't know. Do people actually read the call for articles? Would be my first question. <laughs> when they are writing and refer to see whether what you've done is actually in line with the call for articles, because one of my concerns as well, and that's what I want to get to at some point, is whether the information in the call for articles is adequate. Um, and I am going to send everybody, as well as part of that little handover pack, a sample for what we did for June 2022. Um, and, and you can have a look at that and see how we word it um, as well. So basically, in um, the call in, in March, um, I will say, if you think about it, the March issue the deadline for March is normally the middle of January, which is a very bad time to have a deadline, I know, because it's after people have gone on leave. But I do find that um, there are many uh, people who like to, to, to do um, their articles. So if they know uh, some of my very regular contributors, they will make sure that before they go on leave in December, um, they've actually done their, as much as what they can. So the, the period that we would cover 
in the March issue would be from, um, let me just see, I think it's October to end of October. Uh, it will be from the middle of October to the middle of Jan. That is the period we cover in March. So if you look at what has happened in Liasa, it's um, it's post, it's after conference, but at that time people are wrapping up. So they would be doing end of year programs. They would be doing, um, I know in the days when we used to have face to face, there would be the end of year breakfasts, um, that, that sort of thing. There's also a lot of uh, 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 um, institutions who do um, awards. Uh, for long service awards, they might have uh, special programs on um, uh, um, alumni awards, all, all of that sort of thing. And that is what I would then be covering in March. Um, it will also be where the, the it's sort of the, it's, it's, a, it's a like, a, March is like a bad time of year, so you get sometimes also quite the a bit of a scrambled egg kind of thing. Um, but it's generally things that have happened through the end of the year from about mid-October to um, mid-November. I mean, mid-January, mid sorry. Yeah, if I think about it. Um, then in June, July, that's a very big one. So you find that generally, there's not much news in March, and generally March is about 16 pages, that issue. But then come, uh, oh, the other thing that, that often happens is that when we've had an election year, I would also use that issue to, um, just thinking I've actually got the March issue open right here on my desk. Um, so what we would also do is it maybe introduce new branch and interest group members, uh, talk about uh, the new, you know, the changeover that happens in this past March issue. Uh, it's also on the cover, we will have the preparation the, 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 the library week graphics, um, because this is the issue before SA Library Week, right? Because SA Library Week is uh, 14th, 15th of March. So the, the magazine comes out on the 1st of March, and that is why the SA Library Week poster and graphics will be in that magazine, even though it came out prior to SA Library Week. There's also maybe articles on um, um, what people are planning to do for Library Week. Um, and in this past uh, issue, we had a lot of uh, um, articles from the various universities um, uh, looking at their programs because I think um, in in uh, November, for example, the um, the Saint Free Soul Book Fair um, took place, um, and uh, it was it's, it's an inaugural book fair, so they got quite a bit of um, publicity um, for the uh, book fair. So that happened in November. Um, sometimes libraries are, are renovated. Uh, there's all kinds of programs that happen um, in late October, during November, and then I would cover that in, in March. Um, and then um, June, July, which I've just done, will focus on South African Library Week, and we will also look at LIASA because LIASA's uh, Librarian's Day, sometimes people write about um, Librarian's Day. Okay. Nice. This sound okay. Soft. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to turn up. Can 
Is my sound better, Erna? No, it's still the same. Gosh. I'm, so, I'm sitting with my ear. Time. I'm I'm sitting with my ear next to the screen, so <laughs> I will try to hear. Ah, because I've turned mine right up. Let me just see on the. I'm just going to. I'm going to just check my microphone on board. Yeah, so Nora, your sound yeah. is fine on my side, but ah. other than uh, Erna, I do have earbuds in, so it, it might be um, that that could be the difference. Um, ah. Does anybody so, else have a sound issue? Because I've turned my microphone up. Doesn't seem so. No sound issues wearing headphones. So it seems that if it's if you're using headphones, you you normally find that it's when you are trying to use your your. Okay, because I've turned my my mic up as much as I can. Uh, no, thanks, Nora. I will try to listen carefully. Like I said, I'm sitting very near with my ear to the screen, but I will try. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, okay, so I was talking about the theme. So um, then we come to um, September. It's again, September is, a, is again, you will see, if you look at the magazine, September is a bit of a, 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 a issue, a, a smallish issue as well. It will have leftovers maybe from Library Week, where people didn't make the Library Week deadline, and now they've written some more. But we're also starting to prepare for um, conference. So um, there is not a, a theme running through. Um, yes, there is, sorry. 10th of July, which is Librarian's Day, they, uh, and that is a LIASA program, we will do a special focus, if we can, on Librarian's Day, because that falls after the June issue, really. Um, and so we will focus on LIASA, sometimes there's historical things about LIASA, um, because that is the, the, uh, the launch of uh, the anniversary of the launch of, of LIASA, right? So, and that is Librarian's Day. So we will try and focus on, on that in September. And then in December, um, the focus will be on conference because conference is on the first week of October. So a lot of times, uh, because that's a very tight deadline, uh, 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 conferences in the first week of October, and the deadline is uh, around the 15th to the 20th. Sometimes I, I, I make it an, a, about a week longer to the 22nd of October, and then uh, people still miss that deadline, and then I will carry those things over into March. I don't know if, this, if it's clear, if people are happy with that. But as I say, it, this, is, this information is there in every um, call for articles. You will see every call for articles, it will give you a description of content. Uh, so um, we looked, for example, in this June issue, we looked at 25 years since the Eliasa was established on the 10th of July, 97. We looked at 25 years of Liasa in Touch, first published in 1997, but I discovered subsequently with my research that it actually didn't start in 1997. It's actually started in 1999 when Robert Pierce was the first editor, but we'll fix that. <laughs> and then um, it was 20 years since the first launch of South African Library Week. So we were commemorating 
the, the milestones. Past editors were invited as we, we will, we've done. Um, uh, I think Ingrid, if we look at what we've uploaded, Edna has kindly uh, scanned every copy that she had. We may have still a few missing, but if you go online, you will see that um, Anna Marie has been able to upload um, all those uh, early issues as well. So there's the first uh, black and white um, Lea Saint Touch, which was an A5, black and white A5 newsletter format before it became a magazine. The format changed with. Uh, when Peter Lowe was, was editor. <laughs> yeah. So I think if you, if, if anybody was interested, I think uh, Kahiso gave everybody the link uh, to the Liasa in Touch on the website. And if you go and look at the website now, it, it's really quite amazing um, where we started and, and where we are today. Yeah, uh, we, we owe in a great, debt of gratitude. <laughs> um, so, um, so the, in the call for articles um, with the, with, uh, for the June issue, uh, the deadline was Friday the 22nd of April. And I also then in there would say, share your experience of World Read Aloud Day, International Mother Language Day, Liasa branch and interest group uh, meetings, uh, opinions on issues affecting our profession, continuing education and development, um, uh, challenges that the pandemic has brought to your library, working life. Uh, you know, all of those things are good for talking about. So if we can go to, if everybody's happy, any other questions on production call for articles? I would like to discuss the call for articles in greater depth, um, but I would like to do that further on. Can we go to the next item? It's now 10.44. Um, I did say we'll stop at, at 11. So now I just think uh, if we could have a 15 minute talk about what do you enjoy reading in the, this is now a question for everybody. What do you enjoy reading in the Laos in touch and what are the things that you think are missing? And I'm going to turn off my. I think people can raise their hand and unmute themselves that we hear some different voices as well. Do you think they're not reading the Liasa in touch? If that's how I feel a lot of the time. Quite <laughs> <laughs> right. I, 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 and that is why I just thought I'm going to put everybody on the spot so they could say to me, this is what is missing. I can say uh, one of the, the issues that have been raised with me um, that um, one of the issues that uh, Peter Law has raised, and it is a concern for me as well, and that is how we got onto the global gleanings. Um, and we also invite uh, library leaders to write articles on specific topics, which you start to do that. And if people saw that um, Ellen, for example, did um, an article on um, IFLA um, and faith, uh, uh, what faith's uh, advisory committee is about and stuff like that. Um, an, an issue that, 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 that Peter um, raised with me is that we don't have reflective opinion articles on our profession. So he looks, for example, in global gleanings at uh, libraries, what's happening in international literature, what's happening on the international library scene. 
And so it's just views on various things that he has found interesting, that he's come across, read about, and that he would like to share. And what I would like is to see, and I think what he is saying is that we don't share, we don't talk about our feelings about the, the profession as such. We don't say, or even be, say with Liasa, you know, what does that mean? We talk about what the membership means, but we only talk about it when we are prompted to do so. But we don't say, um, we've come up with a grand idea of how we can get more people to join the association. Or I came across an interesting article about the Australian Library Association and share that information because the mag that is what the magazine is also about, is not sharing only what we are doing at work, but sharing our profession. <laughs> Yes, I remember Leanne saying that she, she likes the people section. Um, when I first started doing the magazine, when I was, <laughs> I was PRO, um, when we came to our meetings, um, John and John Sebi and the late Haffi Haffiji would be waiting for me. And the first thing they did when they see me is they pounce on, I'd had to bring the magazines with me, whatever had not yet been posted. And they started it from the back, Leanne, so that they could see who retired, who was where. And then they went to the front of the magazine. But that used to be quite a ritual, yes. Um, so as just in the chat, as Sunita also said, she loves reading articles submitted by public librarians, as it gives uh, her ideas that she can probably use in her library as well. And then before we go to the next messages, we have Erna first, then after her, Tabi Singh, and then Marupene. So Erna, you can unmute yourself and talk to us. Thank you. I think what I want to say, if I read the message, just it's more or less the same. Sorry, just a moment. <coughs> because I like to see what is being done in other libraries. So then it gives you an idea for yourself, but it is just interesting to see and hear what other librarians do in their libraries. Right, and Tavi Singh? Uh, good morning, good morning colleagues. Um, before I share, what I'd like to read from our magazine. Uh, let me just comment to the house to say, the call, the call for articles is, is, is very good. It's, it's so broad that uh, the scope is accommodating everyone. And uh, the calls for articles from, from Nora, really straight to the forward. It's very straight to the forward to guide us what is really ex expected to for us to to write the articles on? So thank you very much for that. You, you are giving us direction. You are giving us direction. So from our magazine, I'm interested in um, the people in general within our LIS. Those who have graduated, those who got promotion and even those who retired. I, I really like to read their stories, what they have been doing, because that is also part of my self um, development to see how they have been broadening their scope within the LIS. So I enjoy reading that. Even the, the, the outreach programs from different uh, provinces, is good to see how different libraries are marketing and promoting their libraries. Yeah, the work that is that, that different libraries are doing there is really um, eye-opening to us because uh, it's, it's part of, 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 of exploring and ensuring others what we are doing. So sometimes you read there and said, oh, it means next year I will be doing this program the way they have done it. It's, it's, it's part of benchmarking for us if, if, if the, 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 the program has been done 
let's say in 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 Mpumalanga. So the following year, I can say, oh, I'm going to copy their style. So hence, I'm always on the outreach programs. Thank you very much for the platform. Marupeni, I see your hand has disappeared. Is that intentional? You want to share something with us? Thank you. Thank you, Anna Marie. Thank you, Nora. Um, morning, colleagues. Marupeni from uh, University of Venda here in Limpopo province. Um, I'm also in the committee for Helic and Retir. Um, just a few things from my side. Um, the first thing I just wanted to know if we have ever done a survey um, for us, Liasa members, maybe asking questions about reading our um, magazines. Um, that's the first thing. The second one, I, I think it is true it is a challenge for us as library staff or librarians or YASA members that maybe it is true that we are lazy to read. Maybe we do not read our, our magazines, but we are always there in social media and everything. Um, I think I'm also one of them. Mostly I read our magazine if I know that I contributed something. Uh, like I remember after the ESA conference last year, because I contributed something, then I had to read. And then now in March, because I knew that the ELIC and um, contributed something, I think on the magazine again, that's when I had to go to the magazine now to read. I think it is a challenge for us now as um, YASA members and library staff members that we must start um, reading our magazines so that our, our, our magazine so that we must know what is happening in our profession what i also liked from the email from nora it's also talking about the role of us as members of the interest groups and the branches that one of those roles is that we must contribute to um articles to our magazines uh, do we do that maybe we are not doing that enough so I think it's a challenge for us that we must take forward and see how we can change that. I also like this workshop. I hope that maybe we, most of us here, we are coming from the branch or all of us are coming from the branches. Maybe you can take these workshops back to the branches and tell them about our LIT magazine, that it is important for us to contribute to that magazine, to read that magazine and see what is happening in our magazine. Finally, um, I like reading about people in the move and also people who are sharing their experiences on how they, they've been servicing their customers in their magazine. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thanks, Marupini. Anybody else? So um, I'm going to say, it seems like there's no negative feedback here. Everything's positive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, and I, I do take on board the fact that maybe we should be looking at um, a survey for our, our members about, I think the only time we've surveyed members, um, not very in-depth, was when um, we had the debate around electronic and um, uh, print. Uh, yes. And at that time, we um, it was very much, uh, gosh, I think undecided because it was like half, half. And of course, there were lots of people that actually said, can I have both, please? So <laughs> we've just carried on uh, printing. Um, it is very expensive, I must say. Um, and the, the costs are not covered by advertising. Advertising um, contributes a little bit. So we've been very grateful to the Department of uh, Sports, Arts and Culture for their sponsorship um, of, the, of the magazine, uh, because that is actually what is keeping us as going, as you as you all aware. Uh, the magazine is one of the benefits of membership. And... Um, eh, in principle, the idea originally was that 
part of your, your membership fee would pay towards the magazine. So, you know, sort of like a ratio, so much goes to the magazine, so much for this service, um, that kind of thing. But it's not a very practical way of doing things. And if costs have escalated and our uh, increases of, of membership have not um, kept pace, I think, with the costs of services that we get from, from LIASA, we always have to look for um, alternative um, funding. And in this case, for the last two years, um, the magazine, is it two years or three years, Anna-Marie? Um, two years. Two, two years, years, yes. Yeah. So we've been very fortunate to, to be able to secure the funding for the magazine from the department. Um, I don't know what we'll do if we would have to sit again and think very strategically about this. Um, should they at any stage say that they um, don't see their way to giving us that grant um, anymore. At this point in time, it seems they're quite happy with the, with the magazine themselves. And uh, we have also approached the department to start writing um, a series of articles for us on uh, library policy. Um, you know, we, we only hear about the conditional grants and um, at conference, um, and we don't really know what the library directorate uh, is involved in. We know that we have um, advisory committees uh, to the Minister for Legal Deposit, uh, for um, ENCLIS, and, and I feel very strongly that the magazine uh, should be carrying articles from them so that we can keep our members uh, and the broader profession up to date on these developments within um, our sector. Um, and so um, the, 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 that is an area that I think we've started on. Hopefully in September, we will carry our first article. The other um, thing that I am also... Um, wanting to encourage is um, we have very many members who serve on international uh, bodies. So we have, uh, I think it's Mandlas on the governing board of IFLA. Um, there is um, AFLIA, which, and, and Liasa a member, is a member of both AFLIA and of IFLA. Um, we've got Skexol coming up. And I would like um, to see more interaction with LIASA about um, um, about all of these 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 uh, uh, um, developments as well so uh, uh, we have to then identify people and act we actually have to write to people and ask them uh, if to write to us uh, to write uh, about the boards and the international um, organizations that they they serve on as well. So the way Ellen did uh, uh, on faith, for example. Yeah, and uh, those are some very um, interesting uh, topics. It would be nice. Can somebody volunteer? <laughs> Well, while they think of volunteering for that, uh, Ingrid, your hand was very briefly raised. So if you want to um, raise it again, just shout. And in the uh, meantime, Maria. Okay. Has, oh, okay. No, first, your hand was up first and then Maria. So. Okay. No, it was just, just I wanted to say I'm very chuffed that everyone likes the people column, but please, the con you got to keep those contributions coming. Um, um, you know, I may see on Facebook that there's, that 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 somebody's retired or or something like that, and I'm I I'm sorry I don't have time to go chasing after the the um the 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 university or or the library manager or whoever it is to say hey um send an send an article um or send send me a snippet um um. I, if it appears that that UP that, that that we only really often have news from UP and maybe from from UNISA the the library school um, that's because they contribute they contribute um, often um, 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 there's <laughs> LCP is 
uh, is diligent about sending sending through sending through news with the with 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 good quality photos etc etc so i just want to say i'm very chuffed that, that that you all that you all like it um, and 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 if you send please just keep the articles keep the articles coming um um yeah definitely uh, maria shame your hand must be tired by now um you can unmute yourself and share with us thank you nora this is maria from the elec branch in the Liasa in touch, when I read about promotions, new appointments, et cetera, it gives me courage. And I think most students and staff members will also work hard to get promotions. Every information you need about the Liasa is available on a newsletter, like Liasa registrations, activities, successful events held from different institutions, vacancies, and et cetera. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Maria. Well, um, at this point, I see it's 11 o'clock, so Ingrid must be wanting a coffee and a body break, a comfort break now. So um, I wanted to just thank everybody for their, for their inputs. And as Ingrid said, it's up to you, actually. It's every member who writes. And um, whereas Ingrid, I know, doesn't always have the time to follow up, I do when I come across something interesting, even if it's I see a, 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 um, an advert, say there's a, there's a workshop coming up um, and somebody has sent an advert, then I will um, actually contact that person and say, please, can you write me a report? Please, can you do this? Can you follow up and, and write something special about what you've just done? And that is why in March we carried a full two pages on the on the um, uh, Century Sol uh, uh, book fair because um, I actually contacted them. I saw the, that this was an inaugural book fair. I saw how they were doing, and I actually um, who they had invited, and I actually contacted the organisers and said, even before the time, this is what I want. These are the pictures I want. Um, please can you um, write articles? And they sent me one, two, three, four, I think five different articles with different pictures about the things that they covered over that time. Um, and that's why they got two pages. Um, so, you know, I know that there is a 600 word limit, but I'm open to negotiation always if people engage with me before the time. So if when we come back, we can look at the, the obstacles that we have to writing. Okay. Um, sorry, can we be back at 11.15? Sure, let's aim for 11.15. What a past. Um, Kahiso, will you just pause the recording? You don't have to switch it up. You can just pause it. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Good morning, colleagues. Sorry for being late. Who is that? It's Marichi Pinora. Oh, Marichi P, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thanks. And you? Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Shall we carry on then, everybody? Okay. So, one of the things that uh, occurred to me during the break was um, we wanted to look at obstacle and challenges and I thought that we could look at uh, specific challenges um, as well as the specifications for publication if that is off-putting in any way. So point number three, do you ever see an article and think I could write that and think about why you don't? or what are the obstacles and challenges? So these things are together and I thought we could look at that. But before I got there, I just wanted to also um, note that one of the things that concern us, I think, um, by us, I mean mainly me and probably the office, is that uh, 
branches and interest groups are required to write uh, or produce a newsletter and then also write about LIASA activities. And very often it would seem as if uh, people conflate um, LIASA and the work that they do. And it is very difficult uh, sometimes to see the benefit or the impact of a program um, for LIASA. And what I was wanting to ask is when you are writing about a program or when you're organizing a program, do you think about how the program will benefit LIASA? What kind of impact it will have? Um, does it grow the association? And I don't mean only in terms of attracting members and servicing members, but also um, adding to um, a sort of body of knowledge, if I could put it that way, um, of the association. Or is it just something where we um, go through the motions because we need to tick a box? I think that's something that we, we, we really need to think about um, when we are on, on branch and interest group committees. And how do we reflect that? Because very often what I get are news articles. So, and by what, by what I mean by that is like it's reading in a newspaper, um, the how, why, what, why, oh, we did, we, we presented this program. Um, so many people attended. Um, this is what the program was about. But it never goes beyond that. It doesn't go to this was the impact or the benefit to LIASA, or this was the benefit or the impact on the community. Um, more people have heard about LIASA now. Or um, when we did this program, we invited the um, institution head um, and this is the outcome uh, the institution head knows about liasa our counselors know about liasa they know more about librarianship they know more about the profession um, i know there was a time when um, uh, even in the public library sector uh, the counselor for that um, ward for example would get an update from the librarian um, or a, a magazine as part of marketing. I'm thinking of that kind of thing because um, so, so I think in every instance that we, we, we write about what we do, I think how, about how do we measure impact? How do we say that this has actually been a meaningful exercise? And how do we then reflect that in the way we report on that event? So if anybody would like to join in with this discussion, I'd be grateful for thoughts on this. Sure, so Ingrid's hand is raised and then Leanne has a question. She says, by program, do you mean events such as webinars? So I just think any, any kind of event, because in, yes, in the old days, it would have been face-to-face, -face, and now we can't do face-to-face. -face, but if we, as an interest group, you, you know, you've presented a program on something, um, and 20 people attended. What are the thoughts? How does it, is there any analysis as to the information that has been shared? How does, what impact it makes? Um, if, for example, um, the, I know, um, I think, is it Elik that's doing, the, who's doing the um, conversations with leaders? Igbes. Igbes is doing conversations mm -hmm. with leaders. Um, it would be interesting to know the learnings that people take away from that, I think. What is a particular thing? How is it 
impacted on a specific person or on a group of people? Or does it, has it influenced? I know one of the things is that people are saying, how do we encourage a new leadership to step up uh, in Liasa to, to, to serve on committees, you know? Um, and, and I would think that if we had a series like that and out of that series, three or three, four people actually stood um, for election because of what they heard from one of these live to be leaders, I think that would make it a great success. And you could say, how do we replicate this? That's, that's what I, I mean, yeah. Hi, sorry, Nora, I had my hand up. It's Ingrid. Um, um, okay, so so part part of I think part of the prop part of a, a particular challenge is that we have a space limitation of six hundred words. Um, 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 so 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 I, I mean, what I've been trying to do with the helic things is to actually get input from other people, kind of get a comment from someone who's attended. Or, or, or as in the last one, roped Marapeni in to actually contribute, um, to to contribute something in 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 our in our report back to 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 for for LIT. Um, it's actually quite difficult. Um, I mean, certainly I um, or I I will would would I go and I tap people on the shoulders who who've attended and and will ask ask for ask for a comment. You also can't replicate the entire program in the in the in the report. I mean, for example, with Helig, we've had we literally have something every. Oh gosh, it's been like every three weeks. There's been there's been been something. I even I I kind of lose lose track of of all the webinars and the journal clubs and the stuff like that that we that we have. But I think you think you 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 know sort of your your right. There probably needs to be something extra added into that 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 article. But it does. It is it is a particular. It is a particular challenge. Um, again, I'm seeing seeing Sunita's writing about about a survey. It, yeah, you know, we probably don't do enough surveys. But then again, you know, what are those what are those questions that we're going to get, and what is the response rate going to be like? Um, um, so where we've where we have people, kind of, as I say, my, some of my colleagues don't have a choice. I will, you, you know, sort of tap them on the shoulder and say, hey, Nuru, can you actually you, you know, sort of, you were it, you attended. What was your impression? What were your takeaways? Um, um, so, so, so we tend to do that. But I also, also have a bit of a, um, a contrary position um, around around the branch and the interest group newsletters, because quite often the content in there is 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 it it duplicates what is in. It sometimes often duplicates what is in what has been contributed to LIT. It's almost like a, a box ticking exercise. We've got to get four, 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 um, four newsletters out. But why are we doing? I think we need to to kind of raise the question about what are why are we doing newsletters when we actually have the LIT and where 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 our focus should be perhaps on on contributing making contributions to the LIT as a branch and as an as an as an as an interest group um, um, i've certainly over the over the years managed to persuade Helig that we don't need a newsletter we have a month literally a monthly email that goes out we stay in touch with our members that way and we will contribute to LIT um, to make sure that there are contributions to LIT um, um, sorry so so I as I say I have a contrary contrary position about uh, opinion about about newsletters and particularly branch and and interest group newsletters. Um, I've also seen some pretty lousy newsletter examples of 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 wonk, um, <laughs> wonky photographs, wonky layouts, um, different fonts. Um, you know, sort of de <laughs> design disasters. <laughs> um, you know, sort of so so and and a lot of time I know goes into setting up those 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 newsletters where we would rather, we should rather be focusing on contributing to the Liasa in touch 
sorry, that's just my kind of my kind of opinion there. It's an interesting point you raise, um, Ingrid, because my concern is, what, you know, does your newsletter, I know that the newsletters go out to only us online as well. And I cringe sometimes as well, because I can see there's been no proofreading, for example, basic errors from one page to the next. Um, and also the photographs. And I, I do feel that um, it does take a lot of time. I understand it. Um, I mean, if I just look at what I do with Elias, I touch the, the time that it takes me. And if you have a full-time job, and yes, I did do this while I had a full-time job as well. Um, but you really need to have so much resources. And yes, if you just had to do a word document and submit a couple of photographs i think there'd be much less work involved than if you had to put together a whole newsletter and look at your layout and your graphics and you know all of those things so that is something that maybe the branches and infra groups need to take up with um the you know in the rep council um so the, the other thing is that, as I said, I know you raised the 600 words. I'm always ready to engage around that if I think that um, the topic and the article deserves the space. So you will see that, for example, um, sometimes, depending on how much uh, stuff I get, and that is why I use Saint Frisol as an example, or even UP, even though UP is sending um, 600 words at a time, they may have three or four submissions at 600 words at a time. Um, and if somebody says to me they want to do a very reflective analytical article uh, because Helix hosted the coffee talk and, and a question came up that they think is worth exploring, analyzing with comments and stuff. And, no, we're not going to do 600 words, but we think we'll probably get 800 to 1,000 words. I probably will say yes. Um, the 600 words is, you know, when people, um, so there are people that write 600 words um, <laughs> for something they can say in 400 words, and, and um, I then end up having to do a rewrite on it. Um, so it's a kind of a balance and that is why I say the engagement is so important uh, when people actually come and say you know I've got this idea I want to write about this and uh, we actually work together I mean I've done that as well um, very often for for people or I will do um, a copy editing review on an article if there's enough time before deadline and give my my comments as well anyone else um just a few comments but no questions on the chat so Sunita said that um she's struggling with the photographs because of the um phone she uses not necessarily cheap phones Sunita some phones expensive phones take um poor quality photographs as well and then Erna said that if the news is duplicated um, from the branch newsletter to the LIT, it will be more widely read, which is true. That is, I think, the thing to do in the REP Council, if people are thinking about this from the branch and interest group perspective, is that that is, I think, probably the place to raise this and say, but then if you are required to do four articles a year, instead of saying four newsletters, we commit to doing four in-depth articles on our activities for the Liasa in Touch. Um, you do have a wider audience and um, it's on the, on the website in the publications because it's in the electronic version as well. And I think it would be far more um, 
put from from the liasa in touch perspective um it will it will reflect uh the association more broadly i feel um because i do think that sometimes i see things in the in the newsletters and i think uh why don't why haven't they sent this to the liasa in touch why have they taken the trouble to do this for the newsletter and they didn't think at the same time they could actually send it to the liasa in touch because it's an article that's very interesting but by the time i see it um, I've gone past on in terms of the deadlines and stuff because I would actually uh, contact the, the branch and say, please can I have this for the Lias in touch as well. Um, I do see that sort of thing, but sometimes, as I say, it's too late. I've gone past that. Uh, my deadlines are gone. And um, yeah, so it's something that I think the branches and interest groups need to raise uh, in, in council. So just in the chat again, um, Marupeni also suggests that, um, okay, first Ingrid says it's time to rethink ways of doing things. Then Marupeni agrees or suggests that a newsletters, branch newsletters be cancelled, as you said, and that um, they rather contribute to the magazine. Sunita, of course, agrees. Um, Adna, Talking about the quality of branch newsletters, what about workshop or PRO branch newsletters and editors? Um, Nora, you want to touch on that one before we go to the next messages or the next chats yeah. about the workshops? Okay, so um, I know that we've actually spoken about workshops. I am not a graphic designer or a newsletter person, right? We are, I work with a, with, a, with a person who has done graphic design his whole life. Um, and as I said, it's a collaboration because I look at the, I look at the content and then I look at the, um, the look and feel of the entire thing. And as I say, once I see it uh, in print, I can move articles around because it doesn't suit my logic. And that is the prerogative of an editor. Now, I do understand the experience that our branch newsletter editors have had. I have worked with them in the past. And sometimes people, they struggle. They struggle to get uh, branch uh, people to, 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 to um, contribute. So they're going to end up with a very thin newsletter or maybe only one or two articles then uh, the person isn't very proficient in terms of um, and it's always the job of one person because it's not enough people um, and um, then not everybody um, expresses themselves very well some people express themselves well, well verbally other people express themselves um, better in writing so those are things that need to be um, looked at as well and if you have the workshops as you said um Anna -Marie, for at branch and interest group level don't you think it is i mean at first it will depend on a decision as to whether it is necessary if people decide that they actually don't want branch and interest group newsletters that they would much rather write for the Lias and Touch because the work involved is, is a lot of work. Um, and we all know um, how difficult it is to, at every branch, capacitate people in order to be able to do both. Because even if they are writing for the, the newsletter, they would still need to write for the Lias and Touch in terms of, say, SA Library Week, for example. The branch did a, a, a special program for Library Week, and now they have to do it for the newsletter, and they have to do it for the Liasa in Touch. So, you know, do people have that kind of time nowadays to actually do it? And if we do the workshops, how many um, branch newsletters will we have, or interest group newsletters would we have at the end of the day? So I just want to add to that, um, 
many of you that have been on uh, a branch or interest group EXCO for a while know that we used to have those leadership weekends where we did some training for the PROs, for the treasurers, for the secretaries. And we did it at a great cost uh, for Liasa. And I mean, all of you are Liasa. So the more we pay for things like that, you know, the less Liasa can do in terms of other things. And we have found that it was not effective. Um, the very first newsletter that comes out, pictures would be dragged in all corners. It would be, um, the layout would not be right. So it was not effective. Um, and it could have been that it is because of a time limit. There was not really time for doing it practically to actually um, cement that knowledge that they've gained. But I don't think it's all gloom and doom. So um, I've made a note and I'm sure Kahiso is also gonna make a note. We can look at something more substantial that we perhaps can do through the academy. Um, whether it is for the secretaries, maybe minute taking the finances and um, newsletters and so on. Um, and again, all this also hinges on what is happening with restructuring. So we will put it on our little list for ideas, but at this stage, we can't promise anything. That was just my two cents. Um, just a few more chats and a row. So it says, whoopsie, what did I do with my chats? Get them back. Um, okay, Leanne said she would rather do four articles for the LIT um, than uh, uh, a newsletter. Then Tabi Singh agrees with Marupini. And Erna says if all articles, items per branch go to LIT, will it not be costing too much? Good question. Nora, you want to tackle that one? Um, it depends on what, what people are doing. So, you know, you can, you can do a, an overview of a branch activity. It depends on the, on the branch and very much on the activities because a, a thousand words one page on a thousand words. So if you have, you, 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 you see in the LRT, for example, um, two articles, I'm just looking at this. Sometimes you'll get three or four articles on a page, depending on, um, on, on the length of the article, if it's an article or a little news report. Um, how many pictures, if the pictures are good quality, did we, you know, put, push the picture down just to a small picture? It's all got to do with design, really. So um, if I think that there's uh, too much, uh, it depends on what it's about as well, the content, um, how it's written. And sometimes um, I can turn it on to somebody and say, um, you know, I think this article will go for this issue, but the next, the, the other article, it's going to another issue. And just also to bear in mind that just because you send it in as the editor, I am not obliged. <laughs> I try and put in everything, which is why the page, um, the pages uh, differ, page count differs from, from one issue to the next. Um, so if you were writing uh, for March, for example, there's lots of space because ideally what we're trying to do is fill up 24 pages per issue. And um, some branches might write only a half a page and another branch might write things about, you know, a full page. So I'd, I think we should actually first see whether we get the content. Yeah, Nora, I, I agree with you. I think it doesn't matter what it costs. Yes, it is not a, a, a cheap item that we produce, mm. but it, it will be worth it if we have even a bigger issue, a costly issue, but with quality articles from news from all the branches, all the interest group, that every quarter there is a holistic picture of 
what happened, what was planned, um, the impact, et cetera. So I think it will be worth the cost that for a few extra pages per issue. I, I also think that um, this magazine is supposed to be about Liasa. That is a, the thing. It, the, it, this is the official mouthpiece of the association. And it needs to reflect the association. And I think one of the concerns I have and that Anna Marie has also expressed to me is that it looks good, there's a lot, but it doesn't reflect the association. It's more about um, how can I say, it's about libraries, it's about the broad sector. And yes, um, I take on board, I like the fact that people get an idea from reading of what's happening in one part of the country and replicate it in another part of the country. But keep in mind that that is what you are doing for your institution in your job, you know, and yes, we want to do that. But ultimately, what we would like to do is to say this is what Liasa, this is how vibrant Liasa is, this is how Liasa is servicing its members. And if you then use the magazine to actually speak to your institutions to talk about, uh, for example, um, how many people are uh, inviting uh, their colleagues to join as members to grow the association. So if we can reflect in the magazine, a very vibrant association that's servicing us in all kinds of ways, then the magazine becomes a marketing tool for the association and not only for the sector. And I, I truly believe that we, we need to do more to reflect what LIASA is doing for us. I don't know if there are any comments. Uh, no new comments, but Maritzipi has raised her hand. Good morning, colleagues. Nora, I'm not sure if I'll be out of the way, but I just want you to clarify because when you say you need the magazine to be more of the ASA, does it mean that we only have to contribute on a Let's let let me say on the events which has happened on Liasa. For example, we write about the Library Week, Librarian of the Year. I mean, I mean Library Day, and uh, maybe how how uh, when you talk about the, the the how did the conference maybe uh, the impact on me? We don't have to write about. Let's say maybe on the interest group, I have a. Ingrid and I said Ingrid come and share the, this workshop on whatever topic and then we put that on the Liasa in touch. Can you please can, can you let it spread because maybe I'm I didn't understand that. Okay, I think what we were what I was trying to say is that we carry a lot of information um, from from the sector, right? So members write about their own libraries their own work um, they will have a program at their library for library week and they will write about that and i don't mind that because liasa owns library week you know so when li libraries across the country write about what they've done for library week and the branch has also had a, a library week event like a launch event for library week all of that will go into the magazine. But when you weigh up in terms of the content, if it's 30% is Liasa, 40% um, is, is uh, Liasa programs and Liasa uh, activities. And I'm talking, I'm not only talking, I'm talking about the entire Liasa, right? All our members. Um, and the bulk of the magazine, the other 60% is actually not specific to Liasa, um, but it's about uh, somebody, uh, a program that was run at say the NLSA, not oh, that's a bad example, NLSA would be a bad example. Um, I'm just thinking, 
Okay, so I'm looking at the at the um, at the magazine now. Uh, we've got two in, in March, so we have two uh, articles. Uh, let me just see on two pages, two full pages. One is on a book binding revival workshop. The other one is on uh, you two UP articles. The one is on the Department of Library Information services renovates the music library and the other one is about library service uh, at the UP uh, launches its first book nook. Now, those are not LIASA programs. They are broad sectoral programs and they are of great interest, but they are not LIASA programs. And that is what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. It does Thank that you. make sense? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I don't Thank have you. a problem. I don't have a problem putting in the UP um, uh, articles if I don't have anything else. But um, if I would love it if I had, I mean, I've got Chwani uh, has a book publishing campaign. So that's about Chwani, the city of Chwani's library services, or I'll get a UJ article, for example, or a city of, of Joburg libraries, which I get lots of as well, but they are not LIASA programs. So for me, it should, and, and yes, so we reflect within the LIASA in touch, a very vibrant Liz in South Africa, but we do not equally reflect a vibrant LIASA. That's what I'm trying to get the balance right. Um, yes, yeah, so Nora, maybe in, in summary for that is that every single article is welcome. And as Nora said, as the editor, she has um, the prerogative of what she wants to publish and what not and what must be stand over. But if there is an article specific to Liasa's involvement in a program, um, maybe it's a collaboration, whatever, that will have preference over the article where Yasa was not involved. One of the ideas that uh, this might be of interest, one of the ideas I'm, I'm also uh, toying around with, and, and when I thought I'd be able to speak to, you know, people that are, Yasa people that are interested, was that I'm looking to, maybe say that the magazine just very broadly will have first Liasa. So you, you see, we always start the first two pages as the president's column and we've got news from the office, national office news, right? And then we look at all the Liasa things. So we've got uh, an expansion on the, on, the, on, the, on the theme for, I'm looking at the March issue now. We've got library week and then We've got uh, the Liasa videos advertised. Um, the, the overview of IFLAS Faith Advisory Committee, for example, I believe that that is Library Association Link because Liasa is a, a, a member of IFLA and also uh, Ellen is the, um, I think Liasa actually um, endorsed Ellen's um, uh, nomination to this advisory committee. So I don't know if you see how you see how those are kind of liasa uh, promoting liasa it promotes us as a as an organization that is internationally recognized it looks at our um, our members and and how they serve on, in a in a, a professional international professional body so it enhances our our status um, and our uh, as who we are as Liasa, that this is, these are the people who are members. This is how far they can go. And so it takes, uh, uh, takes us forward. But um, so I would do that. And then um, I thought that I could have like uh, news from the Liz sector, and that would be like snippets, like, you know, Somebody presented a short program on reading, for example, and they've got some lovely little pictures about it. And that is like news from the library sector. So if you can see that there's a kind of, um, 
a hierarchy almost, let us say, of, of content. Okay. Sure, you can continue. <laughs> so, um, we've discussed the obstacles, the challenges. Is there enough information in the core for articles? And yeah, it's some specific um, questions as well. The guidance in the specs how do people understand that part of the core for articles? I know you understand about the, 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 um, uh, um, the content, but in terms of where we say ensure correct publication, and I've dealt, I think, with the words adequately, but um, what are the challenges there that, that people may, may have in how they interpret this information about publishing? And we can then also talk about the photos um, in that section. Tabi Singh, your hand is raised. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Anna Mary. I just wanted to make a follow up on the, 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 the issue of articles to be sent. So meaning, uh, Enora, I think it will be proper and um, clear for you to indicate when calling for articles to say the the articles that we need as LIASA are those that are promoting LIASA. Um, maybe with the extension where there is a collaboration, because from our side, we'll be sending articles that are promote, promoting our municipalities, uh, where there will be even no collaboration. So I think it should be clear, because sometimes we just send for the sake of, 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 of complying or the sake of sending a per request. But if the direction is clear to us, we only need uh, articles that are talking to Liasa and promoting Liasa. That will be clear enough. Thank you very much. Ntabi Singh, I think we, we're talking maybe at cross purposes. If we look at the call for articles for Liasa in touching June 2022, right? This was the last call for articles that was sent out. You will see that there is quite a little story about Liasa. So I, I would always start with an introduction and a motivation as to why I'm looking for specific articles. And those will always be the Liasa article. So that's the first part of the call for articles. So in, in June, I said 25 years since it was established, 25 years of the Liasa in touch, 20 years of SA Library Week, Lias in Touch will celebrate these milestones with a commemorative issue. Past presidents are being invited to reflect on their terms of office. Past editors will reflect on the issues. It's now not going to be in this issue. I'm holding that topic over for September because I got too much information. Past PROs can reflect on. So can you see already I'm saying here are things you can write about. This is the main focus of the magazine. This is the things. All will be asked to reflect on why they stepped into leadership roles in the association and how they benefited from this. What Liasa has done for me. Then this year, once again, Liasa presented a virtual launch of SLI to the week on 14th of March on the theme. Please share with us how you interpreted this theme in your libraries. I'm sure everyone is looking forward to having face-to-face -face events once more. Then it starts, you are invited to contribute. So you see, you've had a whole introduction to the call for articles. Talking about Liasa, talking about Liasa's history and asking you to contribute. These are all the ways in which you can, the, uh, the types of articles you can write. So I'm trying to give you ideas. Then after that, I say, please share your experiences of, World Read Aloud Day, International Month. So we're not saying only Liasa. I'm saying the main 50% of the focus should be Liasa. But we also want to talk about our sector and we also want to encourage people to share ideas. Um, and people do that, as you have said, you like reading about 
what's happening in other parts of the country because you can do the program. And it, what would be absolutely fantastic if you wrote a letter to the Liasa in touch and say, I saw this idea in your last issue and we, we've done exactly the same and this has been the outcome for us. Because then I know that the, the magazine is actually being used as a tool for training. So if we can have a letter, it doesn't have to be a long letter, but if the Liasa in touch has had information that you have found useful in your everyday work to actually send a note to us to say, this is what we've done. And this is um, the outcome that it's, we've had in our, in our sphere, because then you give meaning to, to the information that, that is being shared. Anything else on the call? So why I was asking the, the, the challenges to writing and whether there's also enough information in the call for articles wasn't only about content. It also sets out the word count, um, the way photographs needs to be sent and a little bit about how the information has to be organized. So one of the things, for example, um, I thought I would start just with the, the word count. And I wanted to point out um, about your articles, maximum 600 words. Now, as I said, that is not um, carved in stone. Um, it is open to negotiation. Then, um, and I will come back, if I can't manage, um, you've written 800 words, and if I think it's too much, I will come back and say so. Or sometimes I will even uh, cut the article myself, the word count myself, and then send it back to you and say, um, please, will you have a look at this? I have... Um, shortened this article, but I don't want to change the content or the meaning of it. And one of the things I'm really sensitive to is that I need to always hear the writer's voice. So I will not change how you say things, but I might try and shorten it. But I want to keep the authenticity of the voice. And I will, in those instances, go back to you and say, um, please uh, have a look at this. If you're happy with the changes I've made, um, then you can send it back. I even do that with the, as um, Anna Maria and, and uh, the president will know, and I've done it with every Liasa president, is to actually um, uh, ask them, uh, say, I've made these changes, and only if they approve the changes will I then publish. Um, then, the thing is that Liasa has a style guide, and I don't know whether the office has actually made this available um, to everybody. But um, the one thing is that, I don't know if, if maybe if it's been obvious, but in my communications, it's always in Vedana 10. I think the style guide says 11. We have a logo, which we have to use. And so we always, always use the same font and the same logo. And then you will see, um, even on the magazine, for example, the masthead, which we call that the yeah, same touch title right at the top of the cover. It changes. It changes with every term of office. But the Liasa never changes. Um, the in-touch part of it might change, and the in-touch uh, this year got a new graphic, but the Liasa never changes. Um, and then we also use UK English, I think is, is in, the, in the style guide as far as I remember. So I was going to ask if people could please just bear that in mind when they write. Um, Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm looking at Ingrid's note. So, so if we can also please uh, 
set up our documents before you actually start writing. You can set up in, in MS Word before you actually write. When you create your document, you actually check at the bottom to see what language you are writing in, not US, US English is, is very problematic. It will cost a lot to, to change everything and fix it all up. And then um, if you can use a font that that's, um, I know most people write in Calibri because all of our uh, MS Word is set to Calibri, but um, uh, Liasa's uh, style guide font is Vedana. And then um, I, that's what I wanted to say about the, the, the text side of things. The office has the style guide in grid, and I think Anna Marie should send it out to the branch chairs if it's, and the interest group chairs if it's not done that yet. Um, then uh, the, uh, the big thing I think is the photos. So, and I do say photos not more than six. And I know that maybe people find it frustrating that even when they send four photos, we don't use all of it. And that is purely a space issue. Um, and I will go back if photos are not um, according to spec, um, if I think it's a nice photo. So, and I want to use the photo. Then also that there is, um, that they be JPEG attachments and not in a Word file. Now, I just wanted to talk about a little bit about that because I think what we don't realize is that yes, our um, magazine is printed and we have to work for the print process. It has to be high resolution. So that is like, the definition has to be quite sharp. So you don't want fuzzy and blurred pictures. Also, when you look at the photograph, if the people are standing too far away from you, think about it. You're going to see a tiny little face, and then you're not going to see anything. It's not going to have any meaning. So photos are about two things. There's the technical side, and then there is the how does the photo produce what the eye sees. Um, and I am very, <laughs> no selfies as a belief, <laughs> Ingrid. <laughs> um, people may, may find this, but I look at things like when a, a good picture, I will look at which direction are you looking? I can see a selfie a mile away because you're looking down or you're staring at the camera or you've pulled your face or you frowned because you couldn't see your, your, your screen, for example. So all of those. <laughs> I'm sorry, people. I'm looking at the chat and Ingrid's actually, yes, the editor is strict because the editor wants people to look their very best in a photograph that is going out to a thousand and more people. And I think that we all like to look good in a picture. But we also, as uh, this is a professional uh, association with a professional, I hope, magazine, we want to look uh, professional as well in our pictures. So I don't look for the poses we do on social media when we're with our friends. I look at how we are reflected in terms of our image to the world. Um, that is the one thing. Um, and you will see from the people page, um, again, I think it is um, uh, UP, where the photos are very, very professionally taken. And that is because they have their own marketing um, people at, um, uh, um, work and they take uh, their pictures themselves. They, they, they don't ask their staff to submit pictures. They are in charge of taking those pictures. 
Um, so if you look at the pictures on the people page, you will see that they are generally um, head and shoulder, passport size, bit of a smile, people look good, um, because I think that is how people want to be reflected in the world. When it comes to programs, um, sometimes I know you want to take a photo where you look at the whole audience and you want to show how many people attended. But then we also want to look at a close-up. Um, if you have a speaker, for example, look at what does the person look like on the screen when you're taking the picture. Um, they don't want your, the mouth open in a weird angle or the person's got the silly expression on their face. So you take a couple of them and you make sure that everybody, um, that the person doesn't have obstacles in front of their, their faces and stuff like that. I actually uh, think that we also want to reflect uh, the good side, eh? we almost have, have, a, have a good side and a not so nice side that we like to have our pictures taken. So um, I use the same kind of criteria. Um, and then uh, try, if you, if you have people on a, a group on a platform, try to get as close to them as you can and make sure that everybody is actually looking good before you take the picture. Um, and also remember that their names are very important. So um, I will actually go back to people very often and say, who can you please identify the person in this photograph? Uh, because I think names and identifiers, if there are three people in a group, uh, I think people's names are important. Um, it's about dignity um, and um, that people are always reflected um, in a good way, you know? Um, yeah, I, I don't know how else to explain it, but, but I, that's what I look for. I look for how people look in an image. Um, and I will go back and say, please, can you try this? That's on the, how can I say, the content, the image side, the picture side. The other side of it is the technical side. Um, and there's cameras and cell phones. So I heard somebody say, but I've taken my picture on a cheap cell phone. And as Anna Marie said, all cell phones nowadays have good cameras. It's about how we use them and how we set them. And I have on the, um, in the handout, I've given you some links because the way I learned to use my camera on my phone I used to use a little um, automatic camera in the early days of Riasa when I used to take pictures at conferences and I still have those small digital camera. And then of course, now I use my cell phone because I've learned that I can go to Google and say, how do I take good quality pictures on my Samsung phone? Or how do I take good quality pictures on my Nokia, whatever it is <laughs> that you're using? And it will actually give you a step-to-step -step guide. And at the end of the day, once you've set the camera on the phone, there's no problem. I have not got the technical skills to take a good quality uh, screen grab. Uh, so I've been using, when I do, um, I think for the virtual in Daba, there I actually took the pictures on my um, cell phone. So when everybody's pictures were up on the screen, I would actually just take pictures of my screen. But those who are more technically um, advanced than what I am, like Anna Marie, can say to you, this is how you would actually take a picture of a Zoom meeting so that your webinar pictures are, can be clearly printed because you can do that at a high resolution as well. So maybe at this point, if there's anything that people want to talk about, um, the pictures and the photos and the challenges that they have or any kind of clarity that they need.
I don't see any hands or any comments. Um, yes, I also just want to um, say like Ingrid and yourself, a selfie can be spotted a mile away. doesn't matter how good you are in taking selfies. So leave that for, for social media and rather get somebody to take with your camera or your phone um, a proper picture for the LIT. Um, I wanted to, I know that there are challenges that people have with sending photos. Um, I have had people try and share, they, so you're taking the, the photo is now on your phone, right? And now you need to send that picture to me. So sometimes people think they can share via WhatsApp. WhatsApp compresses your picture. So your resolution is um, downsized and so because WhatsApp doesn't want to use up too much data so any picture that goes into WhatsApp and people have shared the pictures via WhatsApp I can't print them I can't use them um, and that is why I asked for JPEG the original file so basically what I do um, and I'm sure that people as again that are more te technical um, probably have better ways of doing it but the easiest thing for me is I've taken a picture on my phone I actually share via, with myself via email so then I can pick it up on my computer I don't know if that makes any sense but that is my workaround and I've been able to get really good quality pictures and email those good quality pictures onto um, wherever I need to um i just wanted people to to share on that whether and then the, of course there's the space issue so people i've also had uh, libraries come back to me and say we can't store the pictures from our cameras onto our work um, uh, uh, um uh, pcs at work because we have uh, data uh, not data space our IT people regulate the amount of space we can use. So that is another obstacle that I'm aware of. And people have been able to find workarounds around that as well. The other thing is that I know that when I was at ETV, for example, we did our, our even though we had laptops, uh, they didn't have um, uh, drives. You couldn't put a stick in there. So you couldn't save anything to a stick and send it from another computer or stuff. In fact, when I started working at ETV, we weren't even allowed to have Gmail accounts or anything like that. So um, everything had to go through um, the work um, server. And there were space limitations on size of files and stuff like that that you could send. And I know that that situation still exists in many municipalities, especially. So if anybody's experiencing those sorts of problems, I'd like them, I'd like you to actually tell us now so that we can actually come up with um, possible solutions. Nobody having any problems. Doesn't look like it. Maybe somebody can share how they get the images from their phone to mm. you if it's not via um, the, the, the method you said you use, I also use that to email it to myself, I'm always using the actual size. When yeah. you have options, mine is compressed, what, 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 and actual size, I always select actual size. Um, so how else do you do that? How do you get your photos from your phone to Nova? Uh, 
Okay, so there's no nobody's having any problems. Um, Erna just raised her hand. Erna, okay. go ahead. Thank you. Yes, um, that sometimes this can be very um, a, a worry because our departmental network also restricting restricting us to a very small um, file to be sent on the net departmental network. But luckily for us, uh, we are allowed a Gmail account. So then I can I actually do the same. I send the photo from my cell phone to my Gmail account. So um, that helps a lot. If that was not the case, then I think I will never be able to send any photo anywhere because photos are, are large uh, files. So that's for me is the only way that I can do it. I know that, um, okay, one of the things I think where there's a misunderstanding, and I got it again um, this time, is I will say, um, and I think it's not the people that are in this workshop, it's the general sort of members. Um, and I, I'm hoping that some of this information you will pass on in within your groups as well, because I do have people writing from um, institutions and stuff and sending me um, photos. Um, so there's been, they've used, they've published a newsletter or they've written a report to their management. Okay, Leanne. Thanks for attending. Um, so, so basically what has happened is that they've written a report for their, for their library management, right? Or they have um, written uh, for their library or their institution has an intranet or a blog or a newspaper or a letter, whatever, right? Then they take a copy and paste of that and they, and they then put it into a Word document, and they send it to me. Um, I can't use that. One, when you take a, an original picture, a photograph, and, they, and you put it into a Word document, then again, there's a, a certain amount of compression that takes place. So even though the file size looks big, the... The, 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 the photograph itself, that file itself uh, is a lower uh, resolution. And so that's when you start getting those fuzzy, uh, uh, fuzzy edges or uh, the picture pixelates, you know, all of that. So that is why I asked for you to not put a photograph into a Word file. Um, I also ask, and that's why I want the original camera file. So what I find that some people do, <laughs> and I say, please send me the original. They then go into the Word document where they've already put the picture. They then extract the picture out of that. And they convert that to a JPEG. And they send that to me. And I mean, you can imagine what it looks like. <laughs> now it's gone through three different conversions that image, that file. And it really, can, I, you can't work with it. You can't edit it. You can't um, compress it any further. There's nothing you can do with it. So again, that is why I ask for an original picture. So if your photo is, I don't know, I've had pictures come that look like postage stamp. If it looks like a postage stamp on your screen, I can't use it. If it's so, you need to look at the picture or the photo on your screen, and you can actually say, No, 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 I don't think this is going to work. But because there's no point in sending a photo that cannot be um, depublished. I think sometimes people think that because we ask for photos, you have to send a photo. And that's not necessarily the case, because if you look through the Liasa in touch, you will see that there are often articles without photos 
or it's an article next to an advert or something like that. So if you don't have a suitable photo, then you, you're not obliged to send a photo for the sake of sending a photo. Um, that it's not a, it's, that's not an issue. Um, but if you can uh, send the original file and then the captions don't go. So sometimes what people also do is they will prepare a whole Word document, insert all the photos, put the captions in there. And then because I ask for there not to be photos in the Word document, they take that photo out of the Word document and send it to me um, as a JPEG attachment. So that, that, that won't work because there the photo has already been compromised and you can't work with that photo if you need to. Because, you know, we often do touch-ups on photos because maybe the picture is a little bit too dark and it won't, um, you won't be able to see it very clearly in the magazine. So we will actually touch up. So if you send us an original file and the light quality isn't very good or the contrast quality isn't very good, the graphic designer will actually try and do a touch up. And I very often go back to people and say, um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use this picture, but let's see what the magic, what magic the graphic designer can do. And very often we actually do end up using a photograph, which I thought didn't look very good. But I will come back to you and say to you, we're going to see what we can do with this picture and maybe we can do some magic. Um, so you might be surprised that I've come back and said, I'm not sure about the quality and we've actually used it. And that's because we've done touch-ups, but we can only do those touch-ups if we have the original file and we have enough um, resolution to work with. Um, and then about the captions, um, yeah, I I'm very clearly say that the captions should not be inserted into the photograph. Write your captions at the end of the article. So at the bottom of the article, after you finish the article and you've put your name, um, I also ask for your designation. So when you put your name, the designation is if you have been awarded the professional library, uh, professional librarian status, right? Um, designation, which is the professional body has awarded you a designation. So that is the PLSA. So after your name, if you have the designation, that is where you put your PLSA, followed by your job title followed by your institution. And below that, you then write your, um, uh, your captions to your photos. And as I said, if, it's a, if, it, if you've had a program and you've had three speakers and you now have a posed picture with yourself and your three speakers, make sure that everybody in that picture is properly identified and that their names are spelled correctly. It's not nice to have a speaker and then you didn't get their name correct. So make sure that at the time that the pictures are taken, that you actually take a note. So it's a little bit like being a, a journalist or a journalist photographer and you see them making notes. It's exactly the same principle. Make sure that when you take pictures of people, that you have their names correctly spelled and then who they are. So you've invited the counselor for whatever, or the MAKO member, or the, you know, they need to be properly uh, described. I don't always ask for the honorables and the excellencies. I don't put that, but there must be at least a title. So I don't have to say honorable mayor. I can say the mayor of Johannesburg, Dr. Mpo, what's the surname? <laughs> Um, but if you if you put it like that, um, I will then make sure that there is some kind of honorific um, before their names. And if anybody wants to think about that, and then also um, these are the things. And and I think my last point on it is. Um, 
what all of this means is that if, when you are planning your program or your event, you have to at that point already think about what you're going to write for the Liasa in touch and what are the pictures you are going to use so that by the time the event actually happens, you've got all of that in place. You have somebody taking, if you yourself can't take the photos, you know who's going to take the photos. You don't have to fall around afterwards saying, oh, who took a picture of this and then end up with any kind of picture. Your coverage of the event needs to be part of the planning of the event. So everything is in place by the time the event takes place. So if there are any comments or questions. So just a comment from Ingrid, um, that she's suggesting that the reporting and photo should be in the project plan for every event that you plan. Good idea, Ingrid. So maybe just to share as well um, with the colleagues, I, mean, I know this is super large scale, um, but for conference, we actually sit with the photographer ahead of time and tell them, we want photographs of this and this and this and this. We mark it on the program for the of what they have taken so that after the event that we don't have a issue with three of the four speakers we have taken photographs of. So one is gonna feel left out. So maybe just keep that in mind as well. And as Ingrid said, put it in your project plan. Um, yeah, I don't know if, if people have seen me at conference as well. Um, uh, I, I, I do send my request through to Anna Marie prior to conference for the Lias in touch because I know that with conference there are very specific things that um, I'm going to be covering uh, about conference. So of course, um, one of the things I will ask for uh, before the Lias in touch uh, goes out, I will ask for, and I do this with Library Week as well, I ask for logos, branding, um, any kind of like uh, publicity, um, all of those things, uh, and see whether there is, is, is uh, anything else that I need, so that or everything is branded. And then while I'm at the conference, um, if there are things that I see that I think the photographer has missed or that we missed before we met the photographer, we, while we were meeting the photographer, then I will go and look for that photographer and say, I need a picture of this, or I need a picture of that, or I'll use my cell phone. Um, because you always see things that you think, oh, that might be a nice picture for the, for the LIT. And then there are the standards, you know, you know that you have to do, we're going to have, um, an, uh, uh, an AGM, we know that there's going to be a, a guest speaker, you know that you, you look at the program, you know who the people are, um, you know that so many presidents are going to be there, so you try and herd them all together, um, you know that uh, there's going to be a librarian of the year, um, and, and that needs special photographs because um, I look at things like the lighting in the hall um, and make sure that the, the, the photographer understands what the requirements are of the magazine um, so that I get decent pictures for the magazine of the Librarian of the Year Award because those are going to be cover pictures as an example. Yeah. So uh, the last thing was the magazine to market yourselves, Leah, so in your libraries. I just wanted to uh, make a little comment here. Um, one of the reasons I like the fact that the, the, the magazine is still printed was is because the magazine, and this I started doing when I was many years ago, PRO for, for Liasa, um, I used to make sure that the president gets a copy of the magazine. So when they meet with guests, 
stay or they go to conferences overseas or wherever, they take a copy of the magazine with them. Um, I like the, the magazine to be with the National Librarian. Um, for example, if the National Librarian also meets with various uh, uh, decision makers and role players, and that's if they have a copy of the magazine, they could actually uh, give it uh, to these people, because those are all ways that the association becomes known. Um, and uh, then, for, for example, the, the president of the association as well, if you think about the the standing that they have in their own institutions and how they have to ask for leave and how they have to do. And this is something I did when I was working. Um, I used to make sure that my uh, immediate uh, manager and even the CEO of the company always got a copy of the magazine. So if anybody asked what I was up to or uh, where I was, anything like that, it, it it gave them a different side of who I was. And that is when I talk about how to market yourself. But this is about how you use the magazine. So if you've written an article, and I know that uh, Tandi, uh, I think her name is Chauke, she's with the, she had an article in March. She's with the, um, what are these people? Um, Com Commission for Media Mediation. Um, and CCMA, <laughs> that's it. She's with the CCMA. She takes her articles and she sends it to her, not only within the um, organization, but um, to, to the top dross, because they have to always um, justify the library to their um, superiors. And they use the Liasa in touch. So she gets very, uh, once she submitted an article, she will always ask me, when are we getting, are we getting a print? When is it? Because she will actually copy that or take the print magazine herself um, to her, uh, not only to her immediate supervisor or her immediate manager, but to top management so that they can see the value of the library. Um, so that is how you market your library yourselves, but also you market Liasa and you talk about to your, in your institution, why it is important that people belong to a library association. Why would you, so you are, I'm hoping using the, the, the magazine in that way um, as well. One of, I think it was Nelly, I can't remember her surname. She wrote an article for the Liasa in Touch uh, last year, uh, something one of the issues, where she explained how they use the magazine um, as a training tool um, in their institution. So whenever a new issue comes out, uh, she and uh, part of the management team, they look at topics that have been raised within the magazine. They then copy that send it out to everybody, and they then have a workshop and discussion groups around that particular topic um, using the magazine. And that is why I always say that the magazine can be not only a marketing tool, but also a tool for training and development. I wanted to know if there were any thoughts um, on that or any other things that people would like to share um, about that. Do you actually take the magazine and give it to your councillor, mayor, whoever, head of libraries, whoever it is. Is there anybody that would like to comment? I don't see any hands or any comments on that specific question.
Right, so uh, thanks Ingrid. We um, value your input. So Ingrid is leaving us now. Then Erna said that um, she never thought of using the LIT as a marketing tool. And then Sunita says we have a newsletter at Musunduzi. So it is viewed by large members, or probably by a large group number of members within Musunduzi, including the mayor. Oh, good. Uh, that's what I wanted to ask when um, Sunita, the, the newsletter at Musunduzi, is it the Musunduzi newsletter or is it the Liyasa newsletter? That, that is what I'm trying to, to get to, um, Sunita, is I understand that within your institutions, you have a newsletter, but I'm not talking about your institution's newsletter. I'm talking about how you promote Liasa within your institution. And that is where the Liasa in touch becomes so valuable. Um, because all the institutions that I know of have um, newsletters. Uh, they have um, uh, blogs. They've all, I mean, you know, UCT has that, has that an institutional, the UCT thing where you could actually read it. And, and very often people, uh, uh, post items from those newsletters onto uh, the Liasa news on Facebook. I often see things there. And I think, but why haven't they done that for the Liasa in touch? Um, so, okay, <laughs> Sunita. Um, yeah, so I often wonder why why they've posted to Facebook or they've put something yeah, some news on Facebook, but they didn't think uh, they could actually do that exact same post or not post, but article for the for the magazine as well, um, because the magazine I think gets shared even though it's a thousand members. Um, I think um, it's also shared because it becomes part of the libraries. Um, collection in, in some cases, and it gets shared with other staff and, and stuff. So, um, so I think that we also need to look, if especially when we are in branches and interest groups, we need to look beyond our institutions and say, how are we sharing what's happening in Liasa with um, Itaquini or beyond um, Itaquini, I think I've received articles lately from Port Shepston. Um, you know, how do we, how do we uh, uh, talk to uh, public libraries across KZN? You know, how do we talk to public libraries other parts of the country? Um, and that is, that is um, I think, uh, the value of, of the Liasa in touch, because you can talk to a librarian in Sanin through the pages of the Liasa in touch. Oh, and I just also wanted to, to point out that with Liasa being a professional association, um, the uptake, and I'm hoping that everybody in this group today has um, applied, have applied for the uh, PLSA um, designations, because I don't see the point of being, you know, you, you being a, a member of a professional body and having the designation, even though I'm retired, I'm extremely proud to put those, those letters behind my name, and I'm hoping that everybody that's in this group has have done that, but I want you to actually use the PLSA behind your names all the time, because we want other members to say, what is this PLSA? What is it standing for? Because as a professional association and a professional body, we actually need to grow 
that number as well. And here is another way of doing it is when you use the, those letters behind your name, other people reading the magazine could say, what is that PL essay that some of these people have behind their names? So I'd like to keep you in mind because this is a, a designation you can use on all your professional um, communications and not only does it have meaning in Liasa, it needs to be used wherever you communicate as well. So if we don't have any more questions or comments, then so we're we going to take that picture. Anna Marie. I think let's do that. So um just everybody switch on your, your cameras. Just give you a bit of time to do that. Oh, I need to change my background first. I see I still have library week. Right, everybody, big smiles. You know, I don't have to look like, I must not look like I do a selfie. Sorry, I need to find the right. Everybody, big smile. Let's do another one. Another one. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, Nora, you're muted. I'm going to have to repeat that again. Sorry. I'm just saying that I was so glad to see everybody. And I hope that um, with this workshop, um, everybody's going to be enthused. And when that next call for articles comes out, you can look out for it in the first week of June. And I know reminders will go out every week but you will be so excited and I'm going to get inundated with fabulous articles and fabulous um, pictures. And people are gonna say to me, no, 600 words is not enough for what I have to say. Please, can we talk about this? And I'll be very happy to accommodate you. So thank you everybody for your attendance today. Thanks, everybody. And remember to communicate with Nora at all times. She will be very happy to help you where she can. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Keep well. Keep Bye. safe. Bye.